Hi guys, so today I would like to discuss about uh, vulnerabilities that have been released um, like uh, last week. Um, so it's a vulnerability in um, NSS, the NSS library uh, that is used by uh, Mozilla. So not, um, I mean, it's used in Firefox, but it's not just only used in Firefox. It's used basically in all Mozilla uh, tools and uh, software. Basically, this tool have been um, found by uh, Tavis Armandi uh, from uh, Project Zero, and uh, the alias for this vulnerability is named uh, Big Sig. So uh, the reason that I want to do this uh, analysis, I think it's even like the first analysis on the on the channel. Uh, I will not explain too much about like what is the vulnerability and why and so on. Uh, I'm really more interested about the last part of uh, the, the blog post uh, he wrote regarding uh, fuzzing and the fact that actually this library uh, was fuzzed uh, by uh, the OSS fuzz project. And uh, these vulnerabilities that is like a buffer overflow have not been found uh, previously. So there is a, a bunch of um, a key point and uh, lesson uh, to to learn uh, from this, uh, these these uh, cases. So let me uh, just a bit quick uh, about like what is this vulnerability and so on. So um, it's a memory corruption when you are. Uh, like processing uh, and especially verifying um, the uh, DER uh, encoded uh, signature. So that's basically something related to um, certificate, ISN1, and so on. Uh, so that's the idea. This library is uh, used, as I mentioned, by Mozilla, uh, but not in Firefox. It's mentioned directly on the uh, advisory uh, right there. As you can see, uh, it's not impacting Mozilla Firefox, but um, like, Thunderbird, uh, LibreOffice, um, Evins, and so on. So a bunch of tools that are actually used uh, a lot. Um, and actually, this vulnerability should be, uh, you should be able to trigger that directly like from the network. So that's why it's also pretty critical. Uh, I mean, if you are receiving, um, like I suppose, like a PDF or uh, something with a certificate directly, uh, like on Thunderbird, uh, basically, maybe the um, the certificate will be verified, and in that case, you can trigger this uh, vulnerability. So it's a buffer overflow, um, so pretty old school. Uh, that's why the, the as the title uh, suggests, it shouldn't have happened uh, because I mean buffer overflow are, are like one of the oldest vulnerability and. Um, it's pretty rare to see that uh, again, especially with the new techniques that we have uh, for quite some time, like uh, everything regarding like address sanitizer, memory sanitizer, I mean, sanitizers in general. So uh, that's definitely something that shouldn't happen. And especially also with uh, a bunch of um, uh, static analysis tools uh, that, um, that, I mean, buffer overflow is something pretty, um, pretty common. So it should be detected. So just to discuss quickly about the vulnerability, uh, it was a buffer overflow uh, when you was uh, calling like the poor mem copy, uh, except that this size uh, of this buffer was not uh, checked. Uh, only uh, there was only some verification regarding like sig length uh, against uh, sig length this one, um, and uh, no nothing regarding like the context u uh, buffer. So that's the that was uh, where the issue uh, was basically. So um, that's for the bug. Uh, what is more interesting is that um, if you take a look at the uh, blog post, uh, totally uh, at the end, you will see that uh, actually Tavis tried to understand why uh, did, uh, did this bug uh, have not been found uh, previously. And there is multiple points that are uh, really interesting. The first one is uh, there is some further uh, inside this uh, library. It's a library that have been first uh, uh, and integrated into OSS files for quite some time. Uh, and the main reason was because uh, Google was using uh, that um, a long time ago. And it's not the case anymore. But um, so they integrate uh, those, um, the, the project and the, there was like a bunch of fuzzers that have been created uh, at the time. Uh, but the main issue is, um, and that's something really important, um, there is some missing end-to-end -end testing, meaning that actually, if you take a look at the fuzzing um, harmless, um, the ones that are that are inside the project, they are only fuzzing 
uh, a sub part of the project. There is a bunch of functions that are not first, and especially the uh, further regarding uh, fuzzing uh, the DER decoding is only testing the decoding uh, and not um, fuzzing and um, uh, calling all the other functions associated to that, uh, like all the functions regarding verification. And that's the one uh, that actually triggered this bug. So first, that's a really important point uh, for us in that case. Uh, there is some missing area uh, in the fuzzing uh, process. The second point, uh, because he actually took a look at um, what the um, OSS fuzz uh, configuration was and so on, uh, there is a limitation in, in terms of um, the number of bytes that will be uh, actually um, um, like the number of bytes that will be generated by the fuzzer. And actually, this limitation imply that when you are doing the your fuzzing, launching the fuzzer, the fuzzer will not create bigger uh, file uh, than this limit. So that's uh, pretty bad because that means you are only um, restricting the fuzzer to uh, some input with this specific amount of bytes. So uh, that's, uh, again, uh, something that shouldn't happen. And in that case, that's something um, due to the configuration of the fuzzer. Uh, so uh, that's also uh, something to, to consider. Uh, it's really important to take a look at what your fuzzer are doing and how you are using the fuzzer. And finally, um, he is mentioning uh, something really interesting uh, regarding like the misleading metrics, meaning that OSS first, the way they are currently measuring the coverage, um, they are uh, taking a look at the complete coverage of all the fuzzer. The main issue is if you have some fuzzer, or you can even think of unit tests uh, that are using some hard-coded value, that means this piece of code will be rich by the uh, when you're going to process some hard-coded value, but it will not be rich using... Um, uh, arbitrary data and uh, also um, it will maybe go through this piece of code uh, but not with enough uh, interesting samples uh, and so on so that's also something interesting um, i would say it's not the most important point because uh, usually um, what is more interesting is uh, i mean the way we are doing the coverage uh, actually uh, will, I think, not change a lot of stuff uh, just by um, dealing with the other issue was possible to, to trigger the bugs, I think. The main issue in that case, it's more like a generic way we are currently taking a look at the coverage. We are doing that like at the, um, at the code level, uh, so at the basic block or at the edge level and so on. Uh, maybe it could be interesting to um, get some type of coverage like at the state level. Um, that could be uh, something interesting. The main main issue with that is um, it's really complicated to evaluate um, how deep you are uh, going into the code. Uh, meaning, um, have you tried this line of code with like a, a, an enormous value, with a, a minimal value, and so on and so on. So you are reaching a line of code. There is some verifications that are done, but you don't have the value and you don't know uh, if you basically try some extreme value uh, at this position. So that's particularly the case uh, if we take a look uh, right there. Um, okay, if this um, this check have been done, but uh, what what was like the, the length uh, right there? What was the length right there? Uh, if this... We, we don't know exactly, we can perfectly reach uh, and process and go through this piece of code uh, just with some perfectly valid data. And we, we will actually, um, if we are using an input uh, with the sig length zero, we will get uh, this error. So we will reach this code. Um, if we have um, this uh, check that is um, done uh, and so on, we will trigger this piece of code, that's okay. And um, on the other side, we will trigger this uh, this one uh, and it will be perfectly fine. Uh, but we are missing some cases and we are missing some cases because uh, ideally there is some additional checks that should be done uh, and especially the one regarding the, the U buffer uh, size. So that's the main issue. Since the further will base on the coverage of 
the existing piece of code, um, it will only focus on that and only try to, to go deeper and deeper. Um, and uh, it will maybe not uh, generate some uh, more interesting stuff. Um, that's why I'm mentioning it's a rare case, uh, because usually something like that uh, should have been triggered. The main issue is definitely the, the two first issue we uh, we mentioned, the fact that uh, there is a size limit and the fact that and that's the, the worst case, I think. Um, it's the fact that uh, not all the, the APIs are uh, first. So that's the point I, I want to mention uh, at the end. Um, definitely, so that's the, the lesson learned by uh, Taviso. I have a, a few uh, texts and advice um, for you if you are doing fuzzing uh, uh, and so on, especially um, if you want to fuzz a project that is already fuzzed by OSS Fuzz, uh, please go ahead because um, the first thing I want to mention, I will actually start right there, is that all the fuzzers that uh, are currently on this, um, this library, uh, they are either uh, five or three years old and so on. And uh, that's a bit I would say that's a bit strange because, um, I mean, the project seems to be uh, developed and maintained a lot. There is a, a lot of commit. I mean, there is 11,000 commit. Um, that's a bit weird that uh, actually those fuzzers uh, have only been uh, cr like updated or even never updated uh, since the last time they, they have been created. Um, so that's, for me, the first point. Um, it's not because you, you create your fuzzers that you just... You should just put them uh, on the side and um, suppose that OSS Fuzz will find anything uh, if um, if you are doing something wrong, because basically in that case uh, your fuzzer should be updated. Your, uh, you should create some new fuzzer for all the piece of code that you you are adding, and especially, and that's uh, another point. Um, all of the time. Um, when I'm doing like a, a, an audit and so on, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually take a look at the unit testes um, and the, um, the the program that uh, that exists. So in that case, for example, we have the VFY chain program, and this program was used by Taviso to prove uh, the the buffer the buffer overflow. And for me, that's one of the most basic stuff that should be done by uh, every developer is uh, when you are creating um, a unit test, um, when you have um, like some testing program like this one, they should be converted into fuzzing harness. Um, that should be something uh, to be done by default. Um, and um, I don't think it's too much of work, uh, to be honest. And uh, we can see that on more recent language like uh, like Rust and Go, uh, there is a bunch of macros that also allow you to, uh, at the same time, like reuse your unit testes as a first target. And that's really nice. And that's really helping uh, people to, to use that uh, in the future. Uh, but that should be your, your go-to. You should write your unit testes and directly, um, if you, those unit testes um, you, you are calling them with some uh, hard-coded data. If those data could be uh, generated by a fuzzer, it should be the case. And uh, if it was the case on this uh, project, basically the, the bug will have been found pretty easily uh, because um, basically those programs are doing exactly the same with some arbitrary data. So uh, it should uh, it should have been found. Another really important point um, is related to, to the one uh, Tavis mentioned, the arbitrary size limit. Um, for me, what that means and um, the, the one of the main root cause is also the limitation regarding the further you're going to use. Um, in OSS Fuzz, there is multiple fuzzers uh, available, uh, but I think most of them are using the same config that is provided in the project. Um, so if you take a look, I think it's in the fuzz and you have libfuzzer and so on. Uh, you have, uh, let me check, config. Uh, so there is multiple, uh, multiple stuff. Oh, no, it's not this one, I think. Yeah, I don't remember. There is uh, oh, automation OSS Fuzz build. So you have some some build stuff and so on. So for the building, uh, I think that's okay. But for the execution, um, in that case, the main issue was um, the config is limiting uh, what the fuzzer is supposed to do. 
So uh, let's click uh, right there. So as you can see, uh, quick D, uh, DER uh, option, so first option, uh, we have a max length uh, right there. So having some op option for your fuzzer uh, is good, but definitely uh, you should um, use multiple uh, fuzzers um, because um, in that case, it was the config of libfuzzer. What will happen if basically you are calling the exact same um, fuzzer but using onkfuzz? Uh, onkfuzz will maybe not use the, the same, um, it will not use maybe the same option. Um, and in the same way, um, if you are using AFL, uh, AFL uh, will maybe not limit it to a specific site. I'm not really sure about that, to be honest, because uh, it's a uh, uh, like known fact that lib uh, AF, uh, I mean AFL um, is uh, really prefer to have like the, the smallest corpora uh, input uh, in the in the corpus as possible. That is also limited uh, the the fuzzing and the fuzzing result in that case, and so on. But the fact is, um, if multiple fuzzer was uh, used uh, and multiple option. Uh, was a used uh, and configuration file, uh, definitely, uh, I think the, the bug will have been found uh, way, way sooner, definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the points uh, I want to mention. I, and yeah, the, one of the most important, um, those further are not calling the public uh, API regarding very uh, verification uh, in general. Um, and uh, what we can see is, uh, especially I think in the backtrace uh, right there, um, you can see that um, this uh, program that actually Taviso used, the uh, VFI, uh, VFY chain, um, actually the different functions that have been triggered are cert verify sign data, uh, and F, uh, FI, VFY, uh, verify data with algorithm ID. So I took a quick look at the fuzzers and uh, I've done some really basic regex. And as you can see, inside the uh, fuzzing, um, uh, the fuzzing harness, there is no calls to a VFY uh, at all. That means this uh, library uh, are not called at all. And, um, I will be really clear for me that's really really bad because um you are not just fuzzing um i mean you are dealing with a library and basically all the api used by uh, provided all the public api provided by, for this library by this library should be fuzzed uh, and should be tested uh, and so on um, what I mean by that is maybe your program um, is not using this function directly. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Thunderbird is only using a, um, only part of it, uh, but maybe um, someone else that will use your library um, um, and um, maybe another project that you are not aware of, or maybe even your code in the future will actually use, uh, use that. So uh, my... Um, I would say my main feedback regarding this issue is that um, I find it a bit sad that uh, once a further, uh, those further have been written, uh, they have just been put uh, on the on the side, um, and basically um, people just think, uh, okay, uh, we are actually fuzzing this library, and that's all. We are not um, doing uh, anything else. We are not modifying the stuff, um, and uh, and so on. And um, regarding um, um, what I think should be the, the best things to do, um, and that should be to convert, um, to also spend some time on converting all the unit tests uh, and um, existing uh, program into a fuzzing harness. It will not take a lot of time, definitely not. Um, I mean, that's a matter of hours. Uh, even uh, even less, uh, not not a lot more to be honest. And uh, you will actually, um, you should get for the exact same uh, unit tests converting into a fuzzing harness. You should get more coverage. That's for me what uh, what uh, it looks like. So if you have eighty percent uh, coverage using your unit tests, you should have way more uh, using your uh, fuzzing uh, harnesses. So uh, that's something uh, really uh, important 
to, to take in, in consideration. So, um, I mean, good luck for the developer of uh, NSS to um, like extend and improve the stuff. If you want to take a look at the, the, the fix that like they actually uh, done, it's uh, right there. So as you can see, they um, add some um, if condition to verify the, the size of the context uh, U uh, and so on. And there is a bunch of other um, stuff that they uh, done to, to verify that. So um, I will also suggest in, in general, uh, maybe to the OSS developer and so on, or at least the people that are uh, creating fuzzing hardnet for OSS fuzz, uh, maybe it could be nice to have like uh, some alert, uh, like I don't know, every every year to just uh, uh, take a look back at the library and see if there is no way to uh, add some fuzzers uh, and so on. And maybe uh, it could be also nice to um, also randomly uh, change the configuration of the fuzzer and see if uh, we can uh, it can trigger some some new stuff. You can especially think of that with like all the different options that, for example, we have in AFL plus plus. Um, there is a, a bunch of different mutators and so on, so that's definitely something that should be done like just randomly uh, from time to time, change the, the mutator uh, and the configuration and see if something uh, new is uh, happening. So I hope you appreciate. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, comments, suggestions, uh, and I hope you appreciate this new uh, format. So as usual, you have all the link, uh, all the link below, uh, and uh, let me uh, know what you would like to see next. Thank you.